uh, have maybe seen already that during the Nature for Cities project, um, there were four cities actually participating. So there is Chancaya municipality in Turkey, Alcalá de Henares in Spain, uh, the city of Seged in Hungary, and as well um, the metropolitan uh, city of Milan. So the questions Eva is going to look at is um, how to choose and assess your NDS project. You need to collect data on the field. Which data to collect and how? So this is the answer of our four basically pilot cities involved in the project. First of all, good morning to everyone and thanks for attending this virtual forum and this session. Uh, this session will be divided into three parts. There will be firstly my intervention to give you a general overview about the data collection methodologies adopted within a Nature for Cities project. Then there will be a short intervention of Cinzia and Giulia for the experience of Città Metropolitana di Milano. And then at the end we can have an open discussion with questions and answers uh, to technical partners. So the data collection organized within Nature for Cities has been focused mainly to feed uh, the holistic assessment process of Nature for Cities NBS, and in particular to apply and test 49 urban performance indicators and uh, eight methodologies and tools integrated within the Nature for Cities platform. Susanna showed you them in the previous session. Uh, the data collection activities have been carried out in the framework of 10 demonstration cases. And uh, as I said before, in the second part of this session, there will be a specific inter intervention of uh, Città Metropolitana di Milano. Uh, so, which were the steps for the data collection process? To ensure data collection consistency, we define a process based on four main steps. The first step is about the definition of all the data requirements, practically with all the tools, the developers, we identify the list, including all the data to be collected and needed for the NBS assessment and for the calculation of the relevant urban performance indicators. Uh, the second step was the data collection. Data are collected by each pilot through uh, one of the methodologies I will show you soon. And the third step referred to data management. Data were managed with uh, Excel sheets, complete with proper tracking code and organized within MDesk. MDesk is uh, our official project SharePoint uh, in order to ensure that tools developers could have promptly access to available uh, to all the data. And at last, of course, the data check. Once uh, available, tool developers check the data collected and took action to address any issues emerging in order to ensure accuracy, validity, and uh, relevance of the data. So uh, to summarize what we had to do, we had four groups involved in the data collection, a list of data requirements needed for each and um, not Nature for Cities tool to assess the NBS, Different methodologies were adopted to collect, to collect data, and once collected, the data were saved on MDesk. Uh, so uh, now, moving on to the methodologies adopted uh, to collect data, we had data collection from public data sources and municipalities' own data, data collection from high-resolution satellite imagery analysis, and data generated from the aerial inspection by drones. Then uh, we have also the data collection of citizens' data through the Citizen A tool. But uh, for this last one, we are going to have a dedicated section tomorrow, so I will skip this point today. Um, regarding the data collection uh, from public municipality and municipalities owned sources. This is a traditional data collection method involving the, the investigation of public sources as official existing databases, public statistics, public monitoring data, reports, uh, previous researches, and municipalities owned databases, including internal works and analysis, financial records, meeting minutes, and uh, internal reports. Uh, this traditional method have, has been widely used by all the municipalities 
in order to be cost and time effective without duplicating the effort and using all the data already available. Uh, but uh, to, to fill the data gaps and to overcome all the data collection difficulties encountered by the cities, we adopted an innovative way to collect uh, data represented by the use of high resolution satellite imagery analysis. Uh, this type of images can be used to characterize the urban environment at different scales. Um, indeed, it is possible to acquire geospatial data with high resolution uh, from which to extract information about urban spaces. Um, data generated di directly are usually land cover maps with four classes, water, bare soil, artificialized areas and vegetation. Then land cover maps uh, can be used to by other tools to generate other urban performance indicators as the urban green space proportion, the biotope area factor, the connectivity of green spaces and uh, the area sprawl. And uh, basically this method uh, involved three steps, the satellite data acquisition, the satellite data pre-processing and the classification of land cover using machine learning. Um, the second innovative way to collect and generate um, urban data is using the aerial inspection with drones. Drone inspection allows to investigate and provide information at small urban scale, achieving higher resolution than the satellite images. And depending of from the drone equipment, so type of camera, thermal sensors, and so it is possible to uh, capture different parameters. Basically, the drone inspections can be used for uh, acquire georeferenced uh, aerial images to build maps, 3D uh, reconstruction, orthophotos to acquire and inspect geometric information as surfaces, volumes, distances, but uh, also the identification of vegetation, green area, areas health status, and so on. Um, most of the constraint, constraints to the application of uh, iron collection is represented by the limits related to citizens' privacy and the presence of secure sensitive areas, so restricted flight zones. However, here we in Nature for Cities we were able to fly in most of the pilots, except in uh, Alcala de Renares. Um, so now uh, a quick look to the Nature for Cities data collection results. Uh, the application of the methodology proposed allows to collect and generate most of the data required to perform the field test activity. Uh, prior to start the data collection, in order to optimize the activities, it was necessary to investigate which were the data needed for each tool, which urban performance indicators should be calculated for each demonstration case, which are the data common to more than one tool, and which are the data not relevant for a specific demo case. Uh, at the end, about uh, 220 data were properly collected, so passed the final check of tools developers, and will be used to assess the NBS and to conduct the field test activities. From this chart, it appears that uh, just the 6% of the urban performance indicators identified in Nature for Cities, uh, that correspond to three indicators on uh, 49, cannot be calculated. And uh, uh, now just a, a quick additional consideration. Uh, there was no single process to be followed in every case. In some cases, data collection follow a linear process. And in other cases, when uh, the data to be collected were more problematic, there had been an interactive process to overcome the weaknesses. Uh, in which the data requirements were uh, firstly set and then refined in terms of data available, other sources of data are considered, and so on. Um, a common practical limitation 
consisting in data provided not in the right format or not sufficiently detailed. Uh, in a few cases, there were not enough resources to create the data in the required format or provide more detailed data due to the complexity of the work to be done. But in general, and in general, municipalities experienced difficulties in the data collection regarding soil, water, and economic aspects. And this is due to the need to collect very detailed data that are often not available by the municipality without conduct specific inspection and analysis with qualified personnel. And uh, uh, last consideration is that to compensate the lack of some data and to allow the NBS assessment, a few default values have been uh, used. Uh, Thanks, Eva. I am Giulia from uh, Metropolitan City of Milan. I work uh, as a technician in the Land Protection Office. Uh, me and uh, my colleague, Cinzia Davoli, are uh, responsible for a Nature for City project in our municipality. We are going to present the experience of uh, Metropolitan City of Milan. The Metropolitan City of Milan is one on, of the four pilot cities selected to share their data to feed the tool. We are uh, located in the north of Italy, in uh, Lombardy region, and the uh, Milano Metropolitan Area is uh, the union of uh, 133 municipalities. Our function is to coordinate uh, the, our uh, municipalities as uh, helping them to provide the basic services uh, to citizens as uh, transport, schools and environmental uh, protection. Here you can see some data about uh, our territory. We have uh, more or less uh, 3 million inhabitants, while uh, our uh, population per unit area in the city is about uh, 2,000. We choose to participate to Nature for City project with our four case study, the four query sites located in uh, different parts of our uh, metropolitan area. We choose uh, the query site because uh, one of our, our function is to adopt the query plan for the metropolitan area. Queries uh, represent an excellent example of uh, renaturalization. This is our, uh, an example of a query site before and after restoration. When the query society finished the given extractive volume, the site is uh, renaturalized and give back to citizen as a park, as you can see in these uh, photos. Now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague Cinzia, who is going to lead in the next part of the presentation as an expert of uh, data analysis. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cinzia. I'm an architect specialized in uh, urban and ambiental planning, and I'm on the colleague of Julia, and I work in uh, the strategic project and the, and the decision super system service of the environmental and territorial protection department of the Metropolitan City of Milan. For the last 10 years as Metropolitan City, we have been dedicated to, uh, to the production and the management of territorial data because they are fundamental for our daily work. In 2005, the Lombardy Regions Government Law established a geodatabase. Uh, this, this, uh, this is called uh, DBT in, uh, in uh, Italy. And uh, this is a spatial data structure produced by an uh, aerial photogrammetric flight shared by all municipalities and all public authorities. Uh, I, during my presentation, I will not speak about satellite or drone data collection uh, that uh, Eva uh, tell, told us before. I will only speak about our, our own data research, uh, our experience about the data research. So, um, in, uh, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, 
this kind of uh, database, uh, topographical database, the uh, technical specification which, uh, with uh, which this data structure was defined are born within INSPIRE, a project of European Commission that defines the spatial data infrastructure in uh, Europe. So, uh, in metropolitan city of Milan, we have a geodatabase with accuracy of 14 centimeters on the ground and representing the infrastructure and the terrains also in three dimensions. We, uh, we built this geodatabase for each of the, the 133 municipalities of metropolitan city of Milan with 127 layers. Uh, now you can you can see you can see uh, some of these layers like street networks, buildings uh, with eight uh, green areas, land use, administrative boundaries, ground cover. Uh, the surface are covered for each type of covering and vegetation. Uh, we created, uh, please, Julia, the, the, the next. We created a system of uh, data application and services that provides municipality and everyone else with this geodatabase free for charge. This system is called uh, the Chimetro and it provides downloads, map service, and navigation and interaction service. Among of, uh, other things from this database, we generated thematic map such as uh, next Korean land cover taxonomy, uh, the, the, the land cover as a Korean uh, land cover taxonomy based map, the soil ceiling and naturality map. So in uh, recent years, thanks to other to uh, founded project, for example, Life Metro Adapt, we can uh, uh, we have been able to use uh, satellite data from Copernicus system, the, 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 the one that we, the majority uh, told to us, to drive temperature related information and then calculate a historical series of each island. These data structures have been a huge help for us uh, uh, in a meeting of need, uh, the accurate and the secure information that the Network for Cities project partner were asking for, but this data wasn't enough. So we have to look for more data, and uh, we found them in our regional geographic system. Uh, in Italy, as in the rest of Europe, we have a law of transparency and open data. In the open data section of the Lombardy region website that you can, you can see here, uh, we could find a considerable amount of data about uh, environment and the climate, such as humidity, such as atmospheric pressure, wind direction, and uh, speed and uh, temperature. But sometimes this data uh, were too general, and therefore we had to make a specific request to ARPA Lombardia. ARPA is a, a regional environmental agency, and through a semi-automatic request system, we were able to obtain some of uh, necessary data. But even if it is not enough, the data needed by the Network for City project development team was very detailed and specific. So thanks to our colleague from the care service in the metropolitan city of Milan, we were able to reconstruct the necessary data, starting from the administrative and design documents that the query member had filed during the project approval phase. So as always, it's not so much the data structure, but the people who make the difference. For this, I, I must thank Giulia that spoke before me, but also Emilio, Fiametta and Francesco, who managed this project making a difference. Uh, thinking about our uh, technical path, we have to tell that we found uh, the, following, the, the following obstacle, fortunately overcome. We had all data sets. Uh, sometimes our data are often non-available, soil and uh, water quality, like uh, Eva told us. Or uh, these data are not sufficient uh, for uh, a lot of analysis we need. 
So uh, for, um, for some kind of analysis, we need uh, a very qualified personnel, but fortunately we have. The data provided are not in the right format. This is an, another, another, uh, another problem. The data are not available uh, at the time of the data collection. Uh, and the data set often are not uh, representative. And in the end, uh, some, sometimes data set, data set are of municipality or uh, private. So they are not open to everyone. I've seen a lot of uh, questions about the open source part, so I just wanted to to uh, to underline the fact that there is distinctions to be done between the open source and the free access to a tool. So first, I think that uh, definitely there will have a big part of the, the Nature Facilities platform that will be free access. Uh, regarding the open source, I don't know exactly, and we'll have to discuss uh, that uh, separately with uh, all the different experts and developers. So it will depend on their own um, intellectual property and so on. Um, so for the free access, I, I think that most of uh, the platform uh, will be will be free access, but it's also still something to to confirm and to and to uh, to discuss with the consortium. But it's probably uh, this way that it will take. Uh, and regarding uh, regarding the the municipalities questions, so uh, after the, the end of uh, of the Nature for Cities project, definitely the objective is uh, for them to to be able to use uh, our different tools. Uh, however, maybe for some tools it will be not possible to use directly the Nature for Cities platform, and some uh, adaptation will be required. So it means that sometimes we uh, it will be needed to to ask for particular services in order to implement uh, the recruit data uh, and to to be able to to adapt uh, to different modules to a specific case studies or a specific cities when we need to add uh, some data because we mainly focus on our four pilot cities and for specific data, for instance, for this satellite imagery analysis or, or other, other data, we will definitely need to implement new cities. And so it will be required to do more work. So. Indeed, um, I can jump uh, at me on this because in, this is exactly the case for our and benefit uh, tool. Uh, which requires uh, some local specific uh, data which can be only collected at uh, uh, the urban uh, urban scale from for each specific case of both uh, MBS uh, project and, and urban setting. Um, for example, <coughs> we don't know uh, uh, which type of life cycle uh, cost we should implement into the model, model and, um, and how to, the tool can respond um, to specific uh, management, uh, uh, different management uh, uh, scenarios. So, uh, those type of uh, answers can only be uh, given if uh, a good uh, specific, let's say, um, data set is, uh, is uh, collected at the urban scale. 